So I never thought I'd do another video about men's fashion, but you know, here we are. I went down a rabbit hole and this is what I have to show for it. So it's me, Joyce, and I'm back to talk about how the fashion industry has been really intertwined with basketball history and basically how black men are usually at the forefront of these iconic moments in basketball fashion history. So starting from the late 80s, you know, the era with Michael Jordan, going to the 2000s, and then finishing in the 2010s, um, the history of men's fashion concerning basketball in particular is just really fun, and I think that everyone should know about it. So I'm going to take you guys back in history with me, and let's get into it. I think one of the people that we contribute this rise of the fashion conscious star athlete to would be Michael Jordan. I know, big surprise, but the man really is a legend for a reason and he really did change the game of basketball forever. One of the ways he did this was through his shoe game. During the 1984 preseason, Jordan wore a black and red colorway of the Nike Airship silhouette. Him wearing the shoes actually got him a warning from the NBA. In the regular season, he ended up wearing his own pair of Jordans in the same colorway, but they were banned by the NBA. And at the time, the NBA only allowed players to wear shoes that not only matched their uniforms, but also matched the shoes of their teammates. And this whole controversy actually made the NBA put in a new policy in place called the 51% rule. Basically, shoes had to be a majority white and in accordance with what the rest of the team was wearing. He ended up wearing the shoes again in the 1985 All-Star Dunk Contest where this iconic picture was taken with the two gold chains and I cannot stress enough how much this photo is just so pleasing to me. And I love thinking about this moment because he got to show his individuality and non-compliance of the rules through his dress. And as someone who loves fashion, I believe that this is one of the most iconic moments in sports fashion history. And it definitely doesn't end there for Jordan in regards to changing the rules and regulations around uniforms. Before his era, the shorts that basketball players wore were very short in comparison to more modern day styles. And one of the reasons that brought about this change was because when he was first starting out, he is to wear his University of North Carolina shorts underneath his Bulls ones for luck. He ended up asking for longer shorts so that the blue UNC shorts wouldn't be visible. And this did start the trend for players to wear longer shorts and they eventually moved off court as a staple of men's streetwear that's still popular to this day. But MJ was also making fashion history off court as well. I think some of his most famous and signature looks was his take on the traditional suit. He brought in kind of an era of purposeful dressing in the 90s. According to GQ, MJ got most of his suits from Alfonso Birdie, a Chicago tailor who did most of his suits custom. Apparently when they first started their relationship, Alfonso had a prototype suit ready for him that had baggy pants and extra long jackets with the idea that they would just adjust the cut in later fittings. However, Jordan ended up liking this look so much that they left it as is, and he ordered 13 more that same day. And his suits are kind of a love child to the 80s power suit and the minimalism and casualness of the 90s. And in a way, Jordan combined both eras into his personal brand, and it kind of made the style seem effortless and timeless. This trend can also be attributed to the rise of this interpretation of the suit in this time period. One prominent designer in menswear, Giorgio Armani, made suits that were free to move in and more comfortable for the average person around this time. And Jordan's style lives on beyond his suits and sneakers. He popularized many trends throughout his career in the NBA. His shaved head, which he shaved in 1989, was something that he popularized. And while other players at the time had done it as well, like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, it was something about MJ that really spoke to his personal brand and to others as well. He also wore berets very frequently and the single hoop earring was a certified trend that I will never let people forget because I love it and it still lives on in pop culture history. Oh Michael Jordan. 
joints still got his hoop there and there. However, MJ wasn't the only person on the Bulls team that changed the fashion game. Like mentioned in my Y2K video, his teammate Dennis Rodman became the notorious poster child for alternative and forward-thinking fashion that I think more people need to be talking about. I love this tweet because I think it's really a perfect way to describe his fashion. He really does dress like how people dress now. Like it's kind of crazy to think that this happened in like the 90s. I feel like if he were dropped in 2020 at the height of his career, he really would be a fashion icon right now. I really do think that he would be. And I think it also speaks to his ability to be so forward thinking in his fashion. And I think what I love the most though was his ever changing hairstyles. I think even now most men don't normally change their hair too often. And I think one of the reasons is because of branding. Like it can be pretty jarring for fans when male celebrities change up like their hair very drastically. I think like it kind of screws up their brand a little bit. However, for Dennis Rodman, he kind of made that his brand. Like people were always looking forward to like what hairstyle he would do, like just what kind of occasion like he would be doing his hair to. Like it was just, you know, it was a moment. People looked forward to it. And then also translated into the clothes that he wore as well. He wasn't afraid to wear traditionally feminine silhouettes or pieces when he was out and about. Rodman was all about the accessories with his multiple piercings and choosing to wear hats, sunglasses, chains, necklaces, you name it. I think his style is very maximalist to the core and honestly deserves its own video, but I did want to include it into this one. All in all, people really looked to the Bulls team and followed their trends because they wanted to be like the players. Like, it was this huge moment in time and they were a huge inspiration for people and I think a really big turning point in the world of sports, fashion, and pop culture. And I think that more people realized this when the Last Dance documentary series premiered on Netflix. And if you haven't watched it, I would really recommend it because it's really good. When Allen Iverson started playing, he pretty much changed the look of what it meant to be a basketball icon, like, pretty rapidly. Not only was he one of the best players in the league, but he was also one of the most recognizable ones and the, one of the ones that stood out the most. This was in part thanks to his cornrows, his tattoos, and like the oversized clothes he used to wear. Gone with the slightly oversized suits of Michael's generations and the semi-formal wear that most people wore in the 90s, it's the 2000s now, baby. And oversized everything is in style and nobody did it better than Allen Iverson. He pretty much ushered in a style revolution in the NBA and brought hip hop and black streetwear to the forefront during his career. He wore do-rags, he popularized cornrows, and he brought out the big statement jewelry as well. And you can see examples of this everywhere, even in the draft day suits that athletes wore at the time. My favorite is this one, LeBron wore for the, his draft day. And you can see that this was pretty normal at the time. Like if you thought MJ suits were baggy, these were worse. And I, I love it. I honestly, I unironically love it. And you can see that it's lived on in pop culture. If you watch the Laugh Now, Cry Later music video Drake did with Lil Dirk. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. This all changed because of the malice at the palace or the Pacers Pistons brawl of 04. To sum it up, the two teams ended up getting into this huge fight, but it ended up being broken up and then this fan threw their drink at Ron Artest and the players and the spectators both started fighting. They didn't even get to finish the game, it was that bad. But it was not a good look for the NBA at all. And basically instead of just leaving it at that, they decided to implement a dress code for the NBA. Which makes no fucking sense to me. Stern's dress code stated that all players must dress in business or conservative attire while arriving and departing during a scheduled game on the bench while injured, and when conducting official NBA business. The new dress code banned fashions most often associated with hip-hop culture, specifically jerseys, jeans, hats, do-rag, t-shirts, large jewelry, sneakers, and timber boots, specifically Timberland-type boots. And honestly, I just don't see how that affects whether or not people fight. Like, 
I really do think there was kind of a way to discriminate against the players that wore these specific items, which were mostly black players, and stifle their creativity because they didn't really like what they were wearing. In any case, there wasn't much people could do about the ban, but it's such an important aspect as to how the fashion landscape of the NBA changed in later years. Because of the ban and how players could mostly only wear business casual attire, this led to the introduction of high fashion in the daily lives of basketball players in a way that was different from before. One of the reasons this is, is the potential exposure brands can now get when partnering with athletes that wasn't possible before social media took off. One example of this is how Beats by Dr. Dre basically blew up because they gifted LeBron James a pair of headphones and he was pictured with them and they just blew up pretty much overnight. This opened up a new avenue for players to partner up with more designers and companies. Before, athletes were expected to align with sports-based brands like Nike or Gatorade, but this ushered in a new era where athletes can partner up with high fashion brands and other companies and just kind of explore their horizons. Now athletes are showing up just, you know, wearing Prada and Tom Brown, so it's definitely a change from what we saw in the 90s and the early 2000s. And the NBA did relax a lot of their rules so that the athletes can express themselves more regularly. And I think it's amazing to see the evolution of fashion, particularly in basketball, which is a sport that I love. And I think it's important that we can look back into the past and give credit where credit is due and acknowledge just how much certain people have such an impact on pop culture and fashion in general. So thanks for listening to my ramblings on this topic and I'll see you guys soon.